achieving correct scale can sometimes be a real challenge in our drawing. What do I mean by scale? I mean where everything is in the right proportion to each other. So it's not just what this looks like or what this looks like, but it's how the whole drawing looks as an overall scene. That no part awkwardly stands out if it's viewed too closely in relation to another part. Let's look at this example. Here we have a building. At first glance, it looks like everything's going pretty okay. We see we have perspective off to this direction and perspective off to this direction. And so there doesn't really seem to be a scale problem with it. However, particularly with buildings, sometimes the geometric shapes, particularly if the perspective looks sort of okay, it can actually disguise the fact that we have scale problems happening. Sometimes the scale problems aren't as obvious until we try and add things to our building or around our building. So for instance, let's try and put some people around this building. People are a really good way of establishing scale because we have this innate sense of what size a person is. Let's start by putting a person close to us. Let's give them a friend, eh? Now let me add a few people a bit further along. While looking at this group it seems okay and this person it seems okay and even this person it seems okay, I feel like they get too small too quickly when I see them all in a row next to each other. At any rate, let's try and draw some people on this side of the building as well. Now, whereas I had a problem with scale over here that I felt the figures were getting a bit too small a bit too quickly, over here I think they're too large in relation to these figures and yet I'm aligning with the window in the same way. So that doesn't seem to be quite working out. If I want to put some people up the back here, how's that going to look? These figures seem like they're much larger than these figures. And this figure is very close to being the same size as these figures, except that they're much further away. So they should be quite a bit smaller. Now, if I put someone in the window, that can also be a useful thing. But they feel like they're a lot smaller than this person on the ground. Well, what about the scale up here? Let's add some figures up here. Now again, we seem to have a scale problem up here that these figures get smaller, a lot faster even than these figures at ground level even though they're not much further away from us than these ones are. If we can't get our scale to work out, it's probably the biggest indication that there is a problem with our perspective. So let's check the perspective of this building. In my experience, the most common cause of a drawing where the scale won't work comes from a confused eye level. We'll just consider that the eye level is actually the level of our eyes. An eye level is on the vanishing points, which are where our perspective lines join. Here we have a vanishing point. Now our eye level for this should be the horizontal line that goes through our vanishing point. It's not too bad. However, eye level is also where the level of my eyes will be when I'm looking at this building. And if this is flat ground, as it feels like it is, and this should also be my eye level and the eye level of anyone within this scene at all, which actually would mean eye level would be here, which means for a person standing on the ground, they would be this height. So already we can see that the actual eye level doesn't work with the scale I've drawn this building. The scale of these two figures look fine for each other, but they don't really go with the building that they're in front of. So let's look at eye level for this section. Now eye level is the same for an entire scene. Every part of what we see 
should use the same eye level. And so this eye level should go right across and all of these perspective lines should meet on it. So let's consider this upper part. So we can see that in fact, the vanishing point for this top story is actually here. It's in a very different place to the vanishing point for the lower story. They meet here. So eye level here for the upper story is actually here, well above the eye level for the lower story. Now if I were to draw a figure up here, then all the figures in a straight line should go to this vanishing point. But we can see that if that happens, we can see they end up looking taller because the window line doesn't follow the correct line. So this is the problem when the perspectives don't align the way they should. Do we draw our figures so that they're correct to eye level down here? Do we draw our figures so they're correct to eye level up here? Do we draw our figures correct so they sort of look correct in front of the windows that they sit on? Because our windows now aren't the right shape or proportion. The other big perspective error we've made in this drawing is that we haven't got our foreshortening correct. Now foreshortening is the perspective principle that as an object moves further away, then we have visual compression. Things become narrower the further away they go. But what we see is while the windows narrow vertically, they become shorter, they don't narrow in width nearly as much. And so they change proportion from being rectangular to becoming more square. And the same thing happens in the top row. When I've drawn this, I've deliberately made a very common perspective mistake, where instead of aligning the tops and bottoms of the windows by joining them to the vanishing point, I've merely made them parallel to the lines above and below them, which means they change the proportions of the windows even more. Let's look at this side. This vanishing point is going to be off the page. So eye level here is going to be between our other two eye levels. Again, the perspective rule says that if this figure is on eye level, then this figure should be as well. But we can see now that that scale doesn't work from the right hand side of the building to the left hand side of the building. Because this eye level is higher than this eye level, we have to make the figure much larger to sit there. But what if we just sit the head on the same level as this head? That works a bit better and it's partly disguised by the fact that the tops of these windows don't align with the vanishing point properly. But what if I want to draw some figures further along? My eye level for this section of the building is actually here. Again, if I wanted to put a figure using the same scale here, their eyes should be going through eye level but that makes them truly a giant in comparison to even this figure here. What if I ignore that and I just try to put figures where the heads kind of line up in the windows? Well again that doesn't really work because even from this figure to this figure it's not looking so good. Now if I don't worry about eye level in the front but I just use the windows Perhaps that's a better way to do it. Maybe this is where a person would be standing. And that feels right, doesn't it? In relation to the building. But again, I have a problem as I move down the building that they don't comfortably move in scale. They, they, seem, to, they seem to get smaller and smaller as I come down here if I align at the same place pretty much on the window because the windows don't align properly with the vanishing point that the wall that they're on aligns with. Well, just don't put people in it if that's going to, if it's going to cause a problem. But it's great to put people in it because it shows us where we haven't managed to capture the principle of perspective where we have one eye level for the whole drawing if we 
if we can draw so that we have one eye level, then we have a consistent scale across our entire drawing, which makes it much easier to put figures. But let's look to see how this works if our building is drawn to the correct perspective. So let me just redraw this now quickly with a single eye level. Since I now have my building where all the parts of the building have a consistent perspective, going to two vanishing points on the one eye level. If I wanted to add all my figures around this building, how would I do that? Well, here's my eye level here. However, I'm going to put the figure slightly below because I think I've probably overdrawn the size of my windows for the wall. I think that's the size of the figure I want. And so to make clear what I'm doing, I'll actually draw some lines in. The top of this head needs to go to the vanishing point. I also need to take it to where I'm going to do another figure here. So basically any figure now I draw between this line and this line should fit the same overall scale okay, with the building, with each other, and with figures even on other parts of the building. All these figures line up very easily. What about if we add figures on this side? Again, these figures all relate not just to the building at an appropriate scale, but to each other at an appropriate scale. What if we were to add our figures up on the top? Oops, his head's a bit big. But what we don't have is the awkwardness of some figures looking too small or other figures looking too large. Because if we make the effort at the start to get our perspective framework correct, then that will establish a consistent scale across the building, which means we can then add all the things that go, not quite like this, but in a more random way of making our drawing come alive. Whether we're looking at people, in streets, in side streets, whether it's cars parked out the front, whether it's street lights, whether it's tables and chairs outside a cafe, potted plants. If our fundamental perspective lines are correct, it becomes really easy to put them in. While we can get away with perspective that's not quite consistent or precise, sometimes if we're just drawing architecture, it usually makes it impossible to maintain a consistent scale when we go to add all the things that bring our architecture to life. If you're having a problem with scale in your drawings, it almost certainly means that somehow you've managed to create multiple eye levels in your perspective and possibly also that your foreshortening is not tight enough. And therefore you have a section of the drawing here, which is a different scale to the section of the drawing here or the section of the drawing here. And that becomes more obvious when you go to add things to it. So why not let problems with scale be a warning light for you that there's something probably not quite right with your perspective and then take a good look at it. If we draw something that looks approximately correct and we think that will do, then we will never progress past the errors that we accept. If we get used to drawing it as it should be, this will be such second nature to us that it will actually become very difficult to draw something like this. This took me so much more time to draw than this view because none of these mistakes came naturally to me anymore. So let me encourage you, use problems with scale as a warning that there are things in your perspective and foreshortening not quite right and work out where they are and once you get on top of them, you'll very quickly wonder how you have ever made them in the first place. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you can put this into practice. Have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.